Vinny's Commanders, and Glory to Mankind. Commander Ricardos has put out a video yesterday from his early access of a Mandalay, talking about the Mandalay as a Titan Bomber, and claiming that it's a pretty good Titan Bomber overall. <clears throat> a lot of folks have since approached me in the X community and have asked me to make a reaction video which articulates how we believe that that statement is actually incorrect and that my Mandalay makes for an average Titan Bomber, but nothing really special and certainly not anything that is great by any shape or form. Um, and as is the case here, <clears throat> our React videos are not screaming, yelling and pulling our hair, but they are about showing data and facts and making arguments based on logic and reason. So what we're going to talk about is a little chart that we put together here, and maybe we'll kind of switch to a bigger version so you can actually read it and see it. There we are, <clears throat> which shows fundamentally the only thing that really matters, and that is how much damage you can do in a general cycle, as in from your carrier back to your carrier in any given sustained period of time in a variety of different ships. <coughs> There's some assumptions, we'll get into that in a moment, but this is the answer. Like if you want the simple answer and if you want this video to be a one minute video, this is all you need to know. There's premium builds on the top left. These are shards builds with anti-guardian tier resistance engineering and premium ammo, which is how premium builds work. There's budget builds on the right, which are uh, equipped with enhanced anti xeno missile racks, which are available only for credits and presume kind of minimal engineering. And then there's also a, a comparison of the speed of the ships down below, as that matters as well. It's like, what do bombers need? They need to be fast to be able to hit vents and get to a core in time, and they need to do as much damage as they can. That makes for a good bomber. <coughs> While staying cold and not getting shot at and not getting blown up before you're actually able to do that damage. That's it. That's what makes for a good bomber. So, so what's the takeaway about the Mandalay? Um, the Mandalay is very much in the Mamba category as far as damage is concerned, and it is significantly slower than the Mamba. So if you want to speed a, a ship that is fast and can hit the vents and get to a core as quickly as possible, you would take the Mamba over the Mandalay because it can do the same thing but uh, in terms of damage, but do so more easily. Or if you want something that hits harder, while still being able to hit all eight cores and in fact doing significantly more damage as part of the process, the Crate Mark II is far superior. And the Pied Mark II is almost in a category of its own in that regard. Uh, the Crate Mark II is easier to use because it's a shieldless build. It's like generally flown that way and a lot sturdier than the Python Mark II. Uh, and it's probably going to be the go-to bomber for most players. The Python Mark II um, requires a bit more skill to use, is... Um, um, generally a lot more squishy than the crate, but it hits a lot harder. <coughs> in fact, almost twice as hard as a Mandalay, which is why, uh, with facts in hand, um, we are saying that the crate, the Mandalay is not really a good Titan Bomber. It will make for a good fighter, I believe, not a great one, considering its power distributor is pretty limited, but a good fighter, uh, but not a good bomber. So the Mandalay, let us set the record straight, is not going to be a good Titan Bomber, period. Or at least not by any definition, factual definition of that um, articulation. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate that content creators put out content out there. There's not a lot of content creators that make content for Elite, but every now and then they put out content that can be misleading and uh, is not based on facts, but based on personal opinions, which might not necessarily be rooted in concrete and practical experience. So here we are to kind of set the record straight. That's it. That's all you need to know as far as like the answer and why we are making the statement that the Mandalay will not be a good Titan Bomber by any kind of metric or measure of that definition. If you want to nerd out, feel free to stick around as we, I'm happy to walk you through the logic of how we got to these numbers, but we're gonna get into Excel spreadsheets. It's gonna be super geek nerd stuff. So like if all you wanted to know is how we felt about it, we're done. That's the answer. Feel free to move on. If you want to nerd out, then keep watching. So this is the spreadsheet and how we got to the number. There's a number of assumptions made here. It all starts with weapons. 
where weapons are actually where there's fewer assumptions being made because weapons are pretty straightforward. <coughs> so when it comes to weapons calculation, there's the raw damage which uh, different weapons do to the thermal core, where only the AX component of that damage matters as the thermal core only takes damage from uh, AX sources. Um, armor piercing, armor resistance are completely irrelevant because the thermal cores for armor resistance is effectively zero. So those don't come into play. So all that it all that sort of matters as far as damage with thermal core is concerned is the 9.5 damage times 12 pellets per shard times the five shards per clip in each shard cannon times 0 0.5, which is the portion of AX damage that shards do. And this is the raw damage per clip done by respective shards. We've taken large, medium, and small shards, which is what can be kitted to different chips, and we'll get into that. And we're taking large and medium fixed enhanced anti-xeno missile racks for a budget build. They are no small enhanced anti-xeno missile racks. So those are not an option. And then we know what the clip fire time is. We know what the clip roll time is. We know how many clips per cycle we can do on the roughly 42 seconds that the thermal core is extracted. And that gives us a damage per cycle. Uh, we also know what the ammo total is of these weapons. Like that's Etsy data, but you can check it in game as well. And that multiplied by the clip divided by the number of shots per clip gives you the total damage per dive that each of these weapons have. This is extraordinarily straightforward. There's no real assumptions here, uh, except possibly in the estimation of like how many clips <clears throat> you can sink into a, a thermal core. If anyone can actually hit events and sink more than six shards uh, clips into the core, by all means, please send me a video. I would be delighted to see that. I am not able to do that. The most I can do to, like, and I've been trying for a while, is six. Again, if you want to make your own different assumptions, I will link this spreadsheet in the link. You're welcome to uh, clone it and do your own calculation. So these are weapons. This is set around the weapons. Um, and now we move on to ship calculations. And this is how we get to a chart or a version of a chart with like before editing that you've seen <clears throat> in the video I was just talking about. So the first thing is to define what the kit is for each of the ships that we're considering, both in the premium build and then in the budget build. In the premium build, we're using AGF shards, uh, as many as we can, considering that we still need to fit at least one medium torpedo, otherwise we're not gonna be bombing the vents. Uh, and we're getting into an entirely different discussion in that case. So, but assuming we need at least one medium slot for a medium nanite torpedo, then the Python Mark II would be kitted with four large and one medium anti-guardian field shards. The crate would be fitted with three large and one medium. The Mandalay would be fitted with three medium and two small shards. And the Mamba would be fitted with two large and two small shards. Um, when it comes to budget builds, the pipe similar logic about needing a nanite torpedo. Besides that, we'll have four large and one medium enhanced missile racks, AX missile racks. The crate three and one, same logic. The Mandalay would only be able to get three medium as there are no small enhanced anti-missile racks, and we're not getting into the uh, discussion around advanced missile racks, which require ammo synthesis, because that's, again, a completely different kind of worms. <coughs> and the Mamba will only have two large of those. We're using premium ammo, which gives plus 30% damage in the premium build. We're using basic ammo in the budget build. Multiply a bunch of stuff, which I'm not going to walk you through with these, because that would be extraordinarily excruciating, but again, the spreadsheet is linked in the comments of the video, so feel free to go and check the calculations yourself. Be my guest. This is a damage per cycle. This is a damage per dive. This is a total credit bonds per dive. And this is a duration of a dive, assuming four minute cycles from when the vents start opening to when the vents start opening again, and you start the following cycle. Now, the number of cycles, again, varies by, um, by ship. Uh, and, and the ammo, the Mandalay will be the one that actually runs out of the ammo the earliest because medium missile rack, the, the budget Mandalay, because medium missile racks uh, have the, few, the fewest ammo. They only have 64 missiles, whereas the large ones have <coughs> 128 missiles, so twice as much ammo. Um, so, so the Mandalay is going to run out of ammo almost twice because like, there's actually a factor... <laughs> and then the reason this is not exactly double is because the fire rate varies based on the reload time and the number of uh, missiles per clip. It's complicated stuff in here, but I'm, again, you go ahead and check your own, your own calculation if you want, but um, these have been carefully done. 
And then there's a return to station time, which is assumed to be 15 minutes for everybody, which is by the time you're done bonding and you need to either self-destruct, well, presumably self-destruct if we're kind of doing this for the sake of like avoiding additional complexity, respond on your carrier, hit that rearm button, undock, get hyperdicted, get interdicted a few times, make it to the maelstrom, cross the maelstrom barrier, get to events, start the cycle again. We've estimated that to be 15 minutes. Again, if you think you have a better number, use a better number, but this isn't gonna change because this, this is the same for everybody and the cycle time is not gonna be a major effect. But anyway, the time you spend bombing and the time you spent returning to station is what gives you an overall cycle time, which is something to be considered if you <coughs> look at sustained damage over a period of time, that gives you the bombs, uh, bomber bombs per hour. And then the max cruise is straight from Etsy uh, Rayman gave me the boost number of Mandalay as a time of press. We don't have a max cruise number for the Mandalay. Presumably, it's going to be somewhere in the 450 to 500. So anyway, Silver and the Mamba faster than most of the others, but roughly comparable to a Python Mark II overall, as far as top speed is concerned. So that's it. That's how we got to the numbers. Again, I'll switch back to the um, charts that we got earlier. This is our answer. This is why we disagree with Ricardo's with regards to his recommendation pertaining to the Mandalay and why we think the Mandalay is actually not a great Titan bomber uh, and, in fact, uh, a pretty average one at best. With that, Commander Mekin overnight and glory to mankind.